Rotoscoping is a technique used in live action movies to separate the visual elements in a shot to allow artists to perform a variety of compositing tasks. This is a very time consuming process. Here we see a professional roto artist at work. They begin by drawing closed splines around specific elements in a shot. These curves are then edited in subsequent frames to produce a series of keyframes. The interim frames are filled by interpolation. Sometimes trackers may be used, but they are often susceptible to drift, so it is still a very labour-intensive process. Expert roto artists can often only output an average of 15 frames a day. In this example we see all the roto curves for a single shot. This film is being converted from 2D to 3D, so every element in the shot must be cut out such that the depth layer can be assigned to each object. The roto curves can then be used for compositing. Here we see the segmentation maps produced for the two characters in the scene. As part of our research, we interviewed roto artists and commissioned the creation of a professional rotoscoping dataset. A film was broken down into individual shots. Each shot can cover a wide range of different challenges. In industry, they are categorised on a complexity level of 1 to 5. Easier shots, at level 2, include elements such as single isolated characters, trackable objects, and simple manual keyframing. At level 3, the complexity increases to include limited motion blur, limited articulation, multiple characters and occlusion. At level 4, there are lengthy camera shots, often with high speed and motion blur. And at the most difficult level, 5, there will be many characters with detailed articulations and deformations, also very detailed shapes like hair or occlusion effects such as smoke and fire. Other approaches to video segmentation include automatic methods. These are often challenged by the complex appearance changes in live action footage and therefore unreliable. Here is an example of a recent state-of-the-art mass propagation method. The lighting changes and shadows created pose difficulties for appearance matching. If automatic methods fail, we must rely on artist involvement. Rather than roto splines, brush-based methods have been proposed but these are not used by professional artists since they do not provide detailed control over shape. We can see the difficulties in the brush-based workflow in this artist's recording. We note that the playback is accelerated by five times. Our interviews with Roto artists produce a targeted list of requirements. A tool must maintain a compatible workflow that accelerates their existing processes and is fast and intuitive. Similarly, the results must be procedural since shots will be shared between artists and their interactions must be predictable and controllable. For example, an edit should not have unexpected changes on previously finalised frames. Based on these requirements, we identified that the keyframing workflow retains the control the artists require. Tracking can also be used to accelerate the process, but appearance changes will invariably cause trackers to fail in all but the most simple shots. Existing tools do not get better with time, so as the artist edits more keyframes, the tool does not become more helpful. We propose to counter these effects by learning about shape during the rotoscoping process. Apart from the rotoscoping dataset, we have two main contributions. Firstly, a shape model framework that works with trackers to reduce the number of keyframes that an artist needs to specify for a shot. Secondly, we also provide a new interactive tool that reduces the time taken to edit each keyframe as it learns more about the shape being manipulated. In our workflow, the artist begins by providing some keyframes. We then run a forward and backward planar tracker at interactive rates to propagate the shape to intermediate frames. In general, these appearance trackers will be subject to drift. From the entire set of labelled keyframes, we build a shape manifold, a generative model of 2D shapes specified by the artists. Using this model, we solve for the intermediate frames by finding the smoothest pass on the manifold between the keyframes that most closely matches the tracker output. When the tracker has performed well, we should have a good agreement but when the tracker drifts, the manifold will prevent unreasonable shapes from being generated. 
Here we show the optimization proceeding. The initial purple estimates are moved towards the optimal result, shown in green. Our shape model for rotoscoping protects against drift in the tracking output and improves as more keyframes are added. Furthermore, it can be trained and applied at interactive rates so that it may be used during editing. Our intelligent drag tool helps reduce the time taken to edit a keyframe. Rather than moving the point individually, the artist selects a group of incorrect control points and roughly drags them towards a correct location. In real time, this new curve is provided to the solver as if it were a tracker output. The optimized output can then be applied to deform the selected points to an appropriate shape. We show a comparison of our new tool to the baseline technique. Under existing methods, the control point of the spline have to be manipulated directly, resulting in a large number of local edit operations. Using our intelligent drag tool, the user can edit whole sections of the curve rapidly. In this example, only two edit operations are required to correct the same curve. We note that this output is entirely based on careful modelling of the shape, rather than relying on consistent appearance. To evaluate our approach, we produce an instrumented tool that provides a standard interface familiar to professional artists. Our generative shape model also allows us to provide feedback on which keyframe the artist should edit next, to allow the tool to learn more rapidly and further reduce the total editing time. We performed a number of quantitative experiments to evaluate our tool, including a user study conducted by professional post-production roto artists, with a range of one to nine years rotoscoping experience. After only 30 minutes of training, the artist demonstrated a quantified reduction in time for real-world shots from our dataset. Please see the paper for a detailed analysis of the results. To finish, we show a sped-up montage of Roto++ in use by real artists as they add and edit further keyframes to each timeline, rapidly improving the Roto quality for each shot.